But speaking of anger, I asked last night why the protests in Melbourne against the vaccine mandates forcing people to get the jab and other pandemic controls were bigger and angrier than in any other state, with protesters last night hanging an effigy of the Premier. <laughs> Now, it's not fair to characterise the many by the few. I know that on the Saturday we saw tens of thousands of peaceful protesters outside Victoria's Parliament. But since then, we've also seen protesters like these, enjoying the thought of a real hanging of the Premier. I look forward to the day I get to see you dance on the end of a rope, you yeah! evil little... Yeah! That is absolutely vile. And yet, again, I ask, why are the protests in Victoria bigger and angrier than anywhere else? And one key reason, I think, is that Premier Daniel Andrews has been more severe, more judgmental, more moralistic, more brutal than any other Premier, with some of his police smashing peaceful protesters into the ground and even firing rubber bullets at them, even though protests in the open air aren't likely to spread infections. What's the danger here? Now, Daniel Andrews has played this pandemic like a battle between good and evil, casting some Victorians as the evil, the devil. And it's no surprise at all if the pushback is in exactly the same coin, treating Andrews as the great Satan. One creates the other and feeds off it. And this is actually terrible public leadership from Daniel Andrews. You don't see it in New South Wales, for instance. You don't see it in South Australia. Now, I'm not saying that the protests of all right on their side. Not at all. In fact, I've been astonished, sad and amazed by the, by the crazy conspiracy theories that many still have about the vaccine and by the protesters' threatening and abusive treatment today of, for instance, Channel 9's Nick McCullum. He's actually a very nice guy, a bit too left for me, but a nice guy. Their treatment of him, it was disgraceful. <laughs> Reporters of Sky News, too, felt unsafe and pulled out. We're supposed to be the Conservative station. Now, is that really the Australia that these protesters represent? Not all, I hasten to add it again, but enough of them. And yet into this febrile atmosphere of mutual hatred and distrust, Daniel Andrews dropped another bomb. It's a true example of his shocking leadership. Is this new pandemic bill giving him the power to unilaterally declare a pandemic emergency, order a lockdown, him personally and his health minister, and fine people up to $90,000 if any dared disobey? And to do all this with Parliament getting virtually no say in the matter at all? Well, today we know that even Daniel Andrews seems to realise he did go too far. His control over the Labour Party is so tight that they all voted for this nonsense when the bill was in the upper house. But now with lawyers complaining, the Bar Council complaining, human rights groups complaining, they're all in uproar and, and a mob outside Parliament and cross-bench MPs in the upper house demanding changes before they pass the bill. Andrews today gave in. A little, just a little. Now, I won't go through all the concessions. Fines are going to be halved. Uh, there'll be a little bit more reporting to Parliament. But the main oversight of all this will still be by a parliamentary committee that the government dominates. And, and that's when a lockdown of millions of people, really that's such a serious attack on their freedoms that surely all of parliament should get to vote on it after a couple of weeks, after a month to extend. Every month, every few weeks, go to parliament for permission to do this terrible thing. And of course... Under this legislation, people still can be indefinitely detained without access to the courts. <laughs> it's just mind-boggling. But there was Andrews again today, not selling this so-called compromise, not seeking more compromise, but still dismissing the protests of the Liberals, for instance, as merely the rantings of anti-vaxxers. You've got the opposition who are kind of wanting to have it a bit, bit both ways. You know, standing with people who are anti-vaxxers, sharing a podium with people who are anti-science, anti-vaccination. 
This is not the leadership you wanted in a democracy. It's the kind of thuggery you expect perhaps from an autocrat. But this sort of stuff is becoming so normal now, look at Premier Mark McGowan in Western Australia, that I fear for our culture and for our future.